This is Business and Economy Network. Hello, wonderful viewers watching within and outside Nigeria. Welcome to your program, Business and Economy Network. We give you information, updates on all business news on every sector of the Nigerian economy. My name is Uhiyoze Edna. Today on the program, on Spotlight, we have the MD CEO, Profus Limited. Profus is in the automotive sector. For all your bulletproof needs, Profus is the answer. And for straight talk, we have the chairman president, Innocent Group. As we all know, Innocent is the manufacturer of made in Nigerian vehicles, ranging from buses, cars, SUVs, to mention a few, all types of plastics and also furniture. And for special reports, we have the chairman, project coordinator, Design Logic Limited, setting the pace in housing and urban development in Abuja, Nigeria. As it is in our culture, you won't be disappointed. I'll join you shortly. Profus Limited started in 2008 with a primary aim to see to the challenges and needs of armored vehicles in Nigeria, West Africa, the entire African continent, ETC. The Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Ade Ogudain, said, By God's grace, Profus Limited is doing wonders around the world. Profus Limited is one of the very few armored vehicles manufacturers and is certified worldwide against the usual beliefs that a Nigerian company can manufacture armored vehicles. Its source of raw materials like the ballistic, steel, glasses are from world-recognized dealers. What you get from Profus is what you can get elsewhere in the world. My name is Adi Tokumba uh, the MDC or Profus Limited vehicle manufacturing plant, armored manufacturing plant based in Nigeria and um, doing wonders all over the world. Proforce is a armored vehicle manufacturing company that started off in 2008 and we started building um, armored land cruisers, armored personnel carriers and um, MRAPs M, M and um, we realized that the reason for starting this vehicle man manufacturing plant is basically because we realized that all over the world even in Africa except South Africa there was no armored vehicle manufacturing plant and even up till now apart from South Africa and maybe some countries in the, in, in the north, North Africa you have some vehicle manufacturing, armored vehicle manufacturing plants. Uh, we have uh, the Western world has always made us believe that in Africa we can't build armored vehicles, and we took it as a challenge. We started off in 2008. Not only do we design our vehicles, we build our vehicles, and we make use of all the materials that are uh, worldwide. Um, confirmed worldwide uh, accepted for example I'll give it a, a typical example when you look at the steel the steel the ballistic steel we use is imported the glass we use is imported from uh, South America and um, the ballistic steel is got from Europe and um, the same company that all vehicle, armored vehicle manufacturers all over the world make use of is the same company that supplies the same parts to us. So, and it is certified worldwide. The automotive sector is doing well. Profus Limited is also getting necessary support from Nigerians who patronizes their products. According to the MDCEO, the government have been helpful by providing a convenient environment to operate in and through access to intervention funds from the Bank of Industry at a 5% rate. The managing director mentioned that the ban on importation through land borders is most welcome as government was losing import duties. The ban helps keep tabs on those who are certified to use armored vehicle and checkmate in cases of insurgency. In Nigeria today where we are coming up, the automotive sector is coming up, there is no doubt about that. And then the Nigerian government is encouraging automobile manufacturers 
when I say encouraging, number one, they're patronizing us. They are cre they are, they've created an enabling environment for us to operate. We have the intervention funds whereby you can go to BOI and collect um, facilities at 5%. And th that allows us to remain competitive. But um, even recently, the government banned importation of vehicles, land borders. Why was that so? Basically because uh, the government has realized that the, 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 the coming in through the land borders, it's always, uh, they, they never can monitor the amount of duty that is paid. You know, when you bring in an FBU unit, that's finished built up unit, when you bring in a finished built up, built up unit, you have to pay 70% duty. And you can imagine you're bringing in an armored vehicle and you pay 70% duty. And not only that, you need an end user certificate. So they realize that people bringing in vehicles from the land borders don't even use end user certificates. But now government is, they are now impounding vehicles that don't have an end user certificate because it's dangerous for the nation. An end user certificate is a certificate saying that you are using an armored vehicle and you are allowed to use it. And in the actual sense, government should actually know every single person on their records with an armored vehicle. Because an armored vehicle can be used by insurgents and it defeats all the purpose of uh, what, what the military is doing to, 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 to um, uh, um, de destroy all these insurgents. So it's, it's so important, and government is encouraging us. Government is encouraging us to make to, to, to make sure that we are competitive, price-wise, and to make sure that the made in Nigeria vehicles are bought. Make no mistake, Innocent is a manufacturer, not an assembly plant of motor vehicles, as this has made him stand out. With his years of experience and high capabilities, Innocent Motors has the ability to manufacture cars and buses of any seater and kind. He calls on our state governments to patronize him because he manufactures to specifications, guarantees better quality, and has backup of spare parts. He aims at proving a point that Nigeria can do even better than other nations of the world in terms of manufacturing. So far, we are making progress. I have the capacity to produce any sitter of a bus, no matter any type they want. Tell them, tell me, I make the formula because I'm manufacturing, I'm not assembling. I manufacture. I will produce exactly what they want. The difference from my factory and the others is that they are assembling, but we are manufacturing. That is the difference. That's why we can do buses, we can do car, we can do pickup, we can do SUV. We are manufacturing, not assembling. That is the difference. So no matter what, if the BRT give me an order, I will supply them, uh, I will produce them, supply them faster, better quality, than what they are important. Hmm. And, and back up spare parts. The BAT of any state. The bot is from me, for uh, uh, six years ago, and it's still on the road. Let the uh, um, Lagos State give me opportunity to build their BRT. They will see the difference. But they don't, have, they don't give me opportunity. If they give me opportunity, they will see the difference. I'll do it better than what they have. What I am doing is to move Nigeria forward. And also, I want to prove to the world now what other people can do that Nigerians can do the same thing. What you need what you need is to support. In response to how he tackles the issue of Forex, the chairman president, Innocent Group, calls on the Central Bank of Nigeria to aid his company for easy ways into Forex and ability to assess a certain amount consistently so its production can be planned around such expected. It has not been so in recent times and this has to a large extent affected production. All things being equal, Innocent desires to manufacture all its vehicles engine here in Nigeria. If things are going well, my, I, my focus now is to make sure we produce engine in Nigeria. And also to make sure that most 
people in Africa are using the same vehicle. That's where is my target. If I achieve this, I know I achieve my target. And the only way I can achieve it, if the Serbian governor can be allowed telling us every month how much foreign exchange he can allocate to us so that we can plan our production. But without giving us anything, we can, it's difficult to achieve. And I know if uh, after I achieve these things, we'll be getting the foreign exchange back from all the African country because they won't have choice than to buy from us. But you must build a house before you enter. You understand? Uh -huh. uh, if they really understand that manufacturing is important in Nigeria, they have to tell somebody like us how much is money more they can give us every month. We plan our production that way. No matter how small we can manage, the important thing is to give us at all. And I didn't say that they should give us everything. But let them know, tell us, say, we are entitled to have so so amount of dollar every month. We pay and they give us a receipt, our receipt will go. Then we plan our production that system. But not that when you apply, it will take them six months to give. How can you control your production? It's difficult. Let them, I don't want them to give us exactly what you want. But let them tell us that we are entitled of one dollar every month. That's okay. We plan our production that way. We plan what the most important items, using it to get it. Then production will be going. But uh, apply, you cannot get. It makes people to be confused. You understand? So if they, they can be able to uh, um, tell us that every month we are entitled to have one uh, one dollar to make your production, to get to a very import. That's what we can give you. We will accept it. But not the apply, no reply, we know where you will get. How can you plan production? That's the major thing that designed the production. Okay. My experience has been a wonderful one. We have the machineries, we have the experts, uh, we have the where we do, we have all it takes to manufacture a car. Uh, for example, I'm the quality control manager. Okay. Now, after production, the car comes from the production session, yeah. which will be handed over to me yeah. by the production manager. Good. Then I'll do the rest. Okay. Now, what we do here is we rectify all the problems. We check the whole car thoroughly. We detect all the problems. We now rectify it and correct it. Now, when the car comes in, as I, just like I correctly say, from the production, it comes to this department. We start off with the rain test. We like use that. pressurized water, force it on the car, so that you know whether the car has leakages okay. from any part of the mm. car, from the chassis, from the engine side, from the grass. Now we take note of it. Then we, 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 we bring out the car, check whether there's the leakage. After checking the leakage, we, not, we, we notify it. Now we have what we call the pre delivery session. You see the instruction. We check the car from the roof. Okay. The tires, everything, the exterior compartments, the interior compartments, the engine side, the chassis side. Now, what we do, the car enters the pit, we check the underneath, that's the engine compartment. Okay. We check everything, the nuts, the bolts, the bolt joints, all those things, whether they are tight, tight. whether there is any error. If there is any error, we note it down here okay. on the legs. After everything, we've checked the engine. We come out to the stereo compartment. While we are doing this check, any error, we notify. We notify. Yeah, on this speed delivery list. So after checking, we check the whole body. After all the checks, we must have rectified all the errors and now call the production manager. If there is no fault, I'll check it. I'll now put my quality control, control. sticker. I have the quality control sticker here. That means the car is okay, okay. for delivery. But meanwhile, when I, when I, I started working, I made it a policy. Good. After every check and after the uh, putting on the quality control sticker, there's what I subjected them to do. You call it cleaning and polishing of the car. Okay. Every car must be cleaned and polished. Polish. Then finally, the drivers will check their battery heads. They are finished. Check, check for the tools. Then it's ready for delivery. Um, my candidate advice to all the Nigerians and non-Nigerians, internationally, that uh, we have met international standards. Standard. By the quality control here, 
you have met international standard. So I'm advising everyone to patronize innocent vehicles. For your deep and insightful business information around Nigeria and globally, keep watching Business and Economy Net. The Chairman Project Coordinator Design Logic Limited stressed that inflation and the ever increasing prices of building materials are the challenges the real estate and urban development companies are facing in Nigeria. This makes forecasting and budgeting difficult as fixing a price before or during a building is completed is no longer visible. This has automatically slowed down projects. Design Logic Limited has been able to make remarkable success over the years as it has not reduced quality of its estate and is being driven by a strong passion to end housing deficit in Nigeria. I think the biggest challenge is the constant inflation and rise in building materials. You understand? Because even if you've uh, imagine we are talking about long time payment plan and you you have your BOQ and it costs for a certain project that is going to cost you certain amount of money and which would automatically determine how much you will sell and you've sold that house and already people have started paying and after the first year you realize that materials are going up why you are still constructing you understand so and you can't go back and start telling them that okay there is an increase, so you have to up your payment, which you know will not be right. So those, I think, is the major key because it has it has slowed down the pace of our project. You understand? But at the end of the day, we try to make it all about our passion, not only about the financial commitment, but it shouldn't deteriorate to such a minimum stage that it will start affecting even the cost of the country because no matter what we don't want no uh, to reduce the quality of ability to high cost of building material because that would be a disaster so those are the major challenges that we've been having because you know in nigeria if you if you purchase certain goods today and you go back tomorrow the price has increased and it's not always easy for that price to come down so I think the issue of inflation is one of the major things of know because any other thing, I think there are normal challenges we face in any business, yes. Design Logic Limited has a housing package for everyone, the high, medium and low income earner. Its Grand Emirate Apartment and Azumi Court is for the middle income earner. Design Logic Apartment and Logic Court are for the low income earners and can go for 5 million and above. He further stressed that getting an apartment for 3 to 4 million is possible if there will be easy access to land. Design Logic and the Federal Capital Development Authorities are working hand in hand in reducing the burden of land acquisition to be able to fulfill his plans of building a thousand houses yearly. We have uh, the Grand Emirate apartment, the Azumi Court, basically for the medium income earners, which consists of uh, four bedroom terrace duplexes and a BQ. While the Design Logic apartment, the Logic Court, all those are for low income earners. You understand? And our pricing starts from 5 million upwards. You understand? And if you need uh, more information on those estates, you can visit our website www.designlogicltd.com.ng. You understand? And uh, we are currently uh, working with like the Federal Capital Development Authority to make available land for us so as to further reduce that cost because we are looking at the possibility of, of building houses for even as low, lower than the 4 million you are talking about because as I already told you most of our, our projects 
we got the land through partnership sometimes we purchase so you know all those costs can be eliminated if we have direct allocation from the government because our aim and object is to be delivering like nothing less than 1000 houses every year I would say I have the right training and I have the passion to be an architect right from primary school and I never waver to that. I stick to it because I have that passion. I just don't know how but I just have the passion to be an architect right from primary school and I work towards achieving that goal. And I started going to site even before I graduated while my colleagues will be in the school I have a great mentor which has taught me a lot and as at that time uh, it wasn't even about the pay because he made me understand that uh, he can't pay me what I said no I just want to learn that's what I told him and after I graduated I was I had the privilege of being exposed to other building project you understand and at some point I decided I need to form my company that's when I uh, we established design logic limited my and myself and my co-founder which is the MD uh, mr. Suleiman we formed design logic because I have this passion to start creating my own identity at that time I felt it was right now the issue of the funding at that time i had to sell the car i was driving yeah to put into the project because and start looking for clients because uh, and i think while i was able to make those clients have confidence in me because they know me back then that i have some i have integrity and they could trust me with their money you understand and that was how we started our first project which was emirate apartment in life camp and it was a total success you understand and there was some challenges then i was having people like trying to convince me to abandon because when we started the funding wasn't coming so well so we was telling me that i'm taking more than i can chew I was telling you, but because I have that passion, and I keep on imagining my my building finished and people living there, I think that was my driving force. It wasn't even about the 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 money; it was about yeah, my pride and ego, as I was say. Because every architect have that ego, you understand, of creating his own identity. I think that was my driving force. I never put the interest of money first and I guess that was how I was able to get it because after the success of the first project everybody that goes there and was like wow we'll be wondering okay where is your next project now and before you know it once we clear aside our building our soul you understand and that was how we've been able to make it this far so I think it's all about your integrity and your commitment to your clients If I carry you go banana, my guy, you go love the girl so. If I carry you go to your leg, you go love the girl so. This is Business and Economy Network. Welcome back viewers, hope you had a wonderful time. This is the more time will permit us to take. Join us, same time, same station next week. We love you. <laughs>